A reinforcing shot of cold air for the eastern half of the United States, followed by a weekend warm-up. Is this the pattern change of December, or is something else lurking in the future? Find out all the details and more next at the Weather Farm. I'm meteorologist Christopher Hale. We have a lot to talk about, so let's dive right into this forecast. As we start our Wednesday, we see an area of low pressure bringing snow across parts of Ontario back into Manitoba. Behind it, we are going to have uh, another blast of Arctic air being pulled down across the plains into the Ohio Valley, which is going to drop temperatures about 20 degrees from where they are on your Wednesday. Across parts of southern Texas, we're going to have area of disturbed weather, light showers, nothing too significant. And off the Georgia coast, we have an area of high pressure bringing generally calm conditions to the southeast, and calm conditions are out west. As we move into our Thursday, we see that area of low pressure moving into Quebec, bringing snows to New York, Pennsylvania, and Ohio, as well as Maine and New England. It is going to be rain along the coast in that warmer weather, but in those mountainous regions across Pennsylvania and West Virginia, we could pick up a few inches of snow. Down along the Gulf Coast, we are going to have additional rain showers uh, with that area of disturbed weather down there. And again, across the West, it's going to be picture-perfect day. High pressure dominates from North Dakota all the way out to Washington State. We do see some snow across far northern Saskatchewan. By the time we wake up on our Thursday morning, we are going to see extremely cold wind chills, at least the coldest that we've seen so far this winter. We're going to see wind chills 10 to 20 degrees below zero across parts of Dakotas into the Minnesota. Down through Iowa, we're even going to see sub-zero wind chills across parts of central Illinois and Indiana. We're going to see wind chills down below 30 as far south as northern Mississippi and Alabama. And that's going to extend all the way to the east and into New England on our Thursday morning. Across the far por northern parts of Manitoba and Saskatchewan, wind chills will be 35 to 40 degrees below zero. Our temperatures are not going to really recover much on Thursday in the wake of that uh, dose of Arctic air that's being brought into the eastern half of the United States. Temperatures generally in the teens and 20s across the eastern half of the United States. High temperatures in the low 50s as far south as the Gulf Coast. As we move into our Thursday, taking us into Friday morning, that snowfall is going to accumulate 6 to 12 inches across parts of New York, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. In those favored lake effect snow bands, you could see higher amounts approaching 18 inches. Across northern New England, a general 4 to 6 inches is going to be expected. We're even going to see snow down into Rhode Island, Connecticut, and even maybe even Boston picking up some accumulating snow. Lighter amounts here, generally one to two inches of snow is expected for our Thursday. As we move forward, we're going to look at the atmosphere, and we're going to take it from a top-down perspective. So we're going to start at the 300 millibar level where the jet stream resides. And the thing I want you to notice here is with this particular map, here is that polar jet that's bringing that colder air to the eastern half of the United States for Thursday and Friday. But just below it, this is the subtropical jet that's bringing the storms along the coast Thursday and Friday. As we, that subtropical jet moves further north, it is bringing with it additional moisture and warmth. So as that cold air departs over the weekend, that subtropical jet rises. So that's an indication to us that we're going to see warmer weather across the eastern half of the United States and a greater chance of precipitation. The polar jet stays raw north of the Canadian border as we begin the next week. We do see a dip in that jet stream across the western half of the United States. And out ahead of it, we see the subtropical jet surging northward. And where these two meet, we're going to see a weather event coming out of the plains into the Tennessee and Ohio Valley for our Tuesday and Wednesday. Our next stop on our map is at the 500 millibar level. Again, this is the trough that moves across, bringing the cold air. Out to the west, we see ridging. We do see that it does need to overcome this area of, of low pressure across northern Mexico. But that warm air is going to spread east to our Sunday. And behind it, as we saw in the jet stream, there's that trough in that area. The polar jet sinking down, a trough digging deep, and then out ahead of it, warmer flow of air. So we expect the eastern half of the United States to be significantly warmer 
uh, to start our second week of December. One thing to notice with this particular map and why we look at the 500 millibar map so closely is as these lines, these height contours, as they get closer together, the closer they get, that's where the more active weather is going to be found. So we see here as this trough digs, the lines are very close together. So we're going to see some, a very active pattern as that kicks out energy across into the Ohio Valley, those lines were very close together. That's a signal when we look at that map of, of what to look for. Our next map is the 850 millibar map. This is our temperature map. Gives us that idea of where the cooler areas will be in the warmer areas. So we see that cool area across the eastern half of the United States, warmer area across the Canadian prairies, spilling into the northern plains, and eventually moving east as we move through the weekend. So this map coupled with the 500 millibar troughs and ridges and the jet stream and the polar jet and the subtropical jet all paint a picture together of what we are going to see here at the surface. So let's now put all of these maps together as we look at this week's pattern of weather. So as we know, the, the low pressure bringing snow to the northeast. We saw that subtropical jet starting to rise a little bit, so it's going to bring a little bit of moisture out of the Gulf maybe instigate an isolated thunderstorm as we move into our Thursday and Friday in Louisiana, Alabama, and Mississippi. Out west, it's generally calm conditions. But we remember we saw that that area, there was this area of low, and there it is. The surface low is in central Mexico. The upper air low was northern Mexico. That's going to kick out onto our Sunday into our Monday, and it's going to spread moisture up ahead into the Ohio Valley as we move into our Monday and our Tuesday. Heavy rains could accompany this line of precipitation as we start the second week of December. Behind it, another trough was digging in those upper air charts. And again, this is going to dig down deep, spreading snows across Oklahoma into Kansas. Uh, that's eventually going to kick northeastward. Where this path actually goes, still too far to be determined but we're going to see something here across the Central Plains, the Ohio or Tennessee Valley by the time we get to the middle of next week. So we're going to continue to put all of our maps together, starting from the top of the atmosphere and working our way down as we develop our forecast here at the Weather Farm. So after we get through this week, what does the rest of the week, as we enter that third week of December, look like? It's warm across the eastern half of the United States. But across the western half, it isn't terribly cold like we've seen across the eastern half. We're seeing temperatures generally 5, maybe as much as 10 degrees below normal by the time we get to the third weekend of December. But for most of the country, it is above normal temperatures. Some areas reaching 15, 20, 25 degrees above the seasonal norms. And as we make our way into that third week of December, we see the real cold air being kept north of the Canadian border, and it's going to stay there for a while. Our temperature anomaly map, as we look at that third week of December, plays out. The Climate Prediction Center has most of the United States with a greater than normal chance of seeing above normal temperatures entering that third week of December. Most of the United States is going to have near normal to slightly above normal precipitation, the exception being the southwest of the United States. And so this is a function of those upper air patterns that we looked at in our maps earlier. So what does this pattern kind of look like? To me, this pattern looks like the La Nina pattern. Dry across the southwest, even dry along the coast, the polar jet staying north and maybe along the Canadian border. We see wet weather across the Pacific Northwest, and we're going to see that as we enter that second and third week of December. We're going to see a return of moisture into the Pacific Northwest, even some above normal precipitation in the Northeast. And we saw that on that precipitation map. So is La Nina, is that taking hold? Well, let's look at the latest data. So this is the Nino 3-4 index. And what we've seen is that for the last several months, the, the index values have oscillated 
near negative 0.5 degrees centigrade below normal to as much as 1 degree centigrade below normal toward the end of October. Where we sit today is that we're in a declining pattern. Temperatures across the Pacific Ocean are getting slightly colder than normal to as much as 1 degree below normal at the latest reading. And so we have seen three consecutive months of temperatures, the sea surface temperatures, at negative 0.5 or colder than normal. So we saw that in September through October, November. And as we sit here at the early parts of December, we are now three months into this pattern. So we can officially say that a weak La Nina pattern has taken hold. We look at this data, and we also look at the Western Pacific Oscillation. If you remember from our video last week, we saw that we have been in a significant negative Western Oscillation, and that value has, is going to continue to rise as we enter the weekend. As this value approaches zero, that's, that high pressure anomaly is not going to be there. That's why we're going to warm up across the eastern half of the United States. We see a, a brief respite or a charge, but we get back to close to zero through the 11th, 12th, maybe the 13th of the month. And then there's hints that we might see a slight strengthening of that high. But by the time we get into the fourth week of December and into the end of the year, that value is well positive. So the likelihood of seeing a high pressure in that part of the Pacific Ocean to help dump cold air into the eastern half of the United States looks to be very minimal at this point. A lot can change. This value does fluctuate. Um, we'll continue to monitor it. The other piece of energy that we want to watch is the Arctic Oscillation. So that Arctic Oscillation, negative values means that Arctic air is being spilled down from the poles into the lower parts of, of the northern hemisphere. When it's positive, that air is really being controlled up north of the Arctic Circle. So we see that it's going to spill south, um, but it's going to spill out into the west. And it's going to retreat a little bit as the temperatures flatten out across the United States. It's going to go negative again, probably spilling out somewhere across the plains. But as we approach the Christmas and end of the year time, that Arctic Oscillation value is going to hover near zero. Again, this gives us an indication that as we get toward the end of the month, we could see near normal or slightly above normal temperatures across a great part of the United States. Still three weeks out, still a lot could change between now and then, but it is something we're definitely keeping our eye on here at the Weather Farm. We hope you've had a great day. We hope you have enjoyed our, this video. If you have any questions, any comments, please leave them in the comments section. Click the subscribe button. Click the bell notification to be notified of when we go live. We hope to see you again soon here at the Weather Farm.